Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. For those of you who know a little bit about me, who've watched some videos and know a little bit about my journey, you know that I joined into med school as a combined BAMD student, which means I got accepted into the program right out of high school and therefore never needed to take a break to reapply to med school, meaning I never took the MCAT. There's always been a lot of controversy with these different aptitude tests talking about whether they truly determine whether somebody is prepared to go into med school or pharmacy school or whatever test you're gonna be taking. So I thought it would be interesting for someone who's graduating med school to kind of go back and take the exam for the first time and kind of see how I do. And make sure you go along with it too and test yourself. I wanna see how you guys are doing, so make sure you give the video a like and drop your score down in the comments below. To be honest, I don't know exactly what to expect. I've never taken this. I assume it's gonna be like your basic biology, chemistry, maybe some physics, which I'm scared of. Um, but I have, I don't know what you guys are allowed to have. I have a pencil and some scratch paper, hopefully to help me out with those math problems. But without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so I was looking at some, some good free practice tests that I could take and I came upon the Princeton Review which has a 10 question assessment for the MCAT and it's free and it kind of uh, quickly sees your readiness. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that one. Give me 10 questions, we'll see how ready I am. And it says if you get at least an eight out of 10, you get the right to earn an extra 100 bucks off. If I somehow by some miracle get an eight out of 10, I'm gonna put that code in the description below so somebody else can use that because obviously I have no need for it. But here we go, we're gonna go ahead and come down here and we're gonna go ahead and start this quiz. So. Let's see how this goes. Okay. An object is projected from the ground at an angle, oh my God, trig or something, from the ground at an angle of 30 above the horizontal and returns to the ground eight seconds later. What is the object's maximum height? Oh gosh, it's been a while. Okay, gotta draw it. What is the object's maximum height? I don't even know how to start this. All I did was draw a line with a 30 degree angle. I feel like I would need at least one or two of these sides because I think it's like a Pythagorean theorem and you have the angle. Oh my God, this is like sine, cosine, Sokotoa. Okay, let me get my graphing calculator. All right, so I have my calculator. Okay, so let me draw this. It's like a triangle. I just don't have any of these other values. Oh my gosh. You know, I feel like there is not enough information to solve is always a trap. I really feel like that is never the right answer, but I honestly don't know how to do this. Uh, we don't know, we don't have any idea about the speed. You know what, I, I honestly don't have any idea, but I don't think not enough information to solve is ever the right answer. Wouldn't you have to know the speed? I think you have to know the speed. I'm gonna go, there's not enough information to solve. You guys, I, you guys might be like, this guy's an idiot. I have no idea how to do this. Okay, next one. Uh, all of the types of bonds are involved in synthesizing double-stranded DNA, except, okay. So let's, I, okay, so it's an except question. I know there's phosphodiester bonds. I know there's hydrogen bonds, and I'm pretty sure beta and glycosidic linkages, disulfide bonds. It's either A or B. I don't think, I actually don't think it's, I, I think disulfide bonds are not included. Oh my gosh, this is just like, this really makes me feel dumb. I don't know how any of this is really relevant to med school though, except like your basic, basic sciences. Okay, we're gonna go disulfide bonds because I don't think that's right. And it won't let me click. There we go. All right, next. I don't think we're getting eight out of 10. <laughs> According to the elaboration likelihood model, which of the following does not predict whether a message will be persuasive? Okay. This one, I think, I mean, unless I totally am misunderstanding this likelihood model, I don't think how long you talk about something would be more persuasive, but studies have been shown that the more attractive people are gonna be more believable. And then of course the trustworthiness and truthfulness of the message makes it more believable. So if that's not right, then I'm completely misunderstanding this whole model thing. So that's next. Which of the following best characterizes the difference between fatty acids and phospholipids? Oh, the shape. Oh, I'm trying to imagine like a cell membrane because we always learn about like cholesterol and fatty acids and phospholipids there for my cells. No, okay, let's, let's do this one at a time. Phospholipids have one tail and four membranes. That sounds, because phospholipid bilayer, that's what we heard about in cell bio. So A is looking good. And I think fatty acids form my cells. 
but do fatty, but do fossil lipids have one tail or two? Oh shoot, A and C both sound similar. Okay, so I know it's not B or D because I know phospholipids are the ones that are in the membranes. I think phospholipids have two tails and fatty acids have one. This is gonna be really embarrassing. I'm hoping I can get it out of 10, maybe four was my guess initially. Trying to imagine, I'm pretty sure I'm looking at, I'm trying to imagine a picture of the cell membrane. I think fat phospholipids have two tails. I'm going with that next. Cooley's looking glass self, what? States that a person's sense of self is the result of the perception of others. The sociology theory that best captures this is, this is not preparing you at all for med school. What does this have to do with anything? Okay, these theories, oh my goodness. Conflict theory, labeling theory. Oh, I just I just do not know any of these theories. Okay, let's just at least like make an educated guess. Okay, sense, your sense of self is the perception of others. It doesn't sound like a big conflict. Functionalists see usually like how people work together. I kind of feel like it's labeling theory because like you label yourself, your sense of self is how other people would label you or perceive you. I'm gonna go with labeling theory. Final answer. Yeah, next, this is <laughs> so bad. Okay, all right, some bugs. All right, microbacteria, let's go. Let's go, microbiome. All right, which of the following organisms would be forced to undergo fermentation in the presence of a toxin that blocks oxidative phosphorylation? So basically, which of the following is like an anaerobe? Okay, well, it says they're all anaerobic, okay. Which of the following would be forced to undergo fermentation, which is a non-oxidative process in the presence of a toxin that blocks. So this is an oxidative process. Fermentation is not. So it would be something that can do both, which would be a facultative anaerobe, not an obligate, because an obligate, you would only be able to do one or the other. So, um, so it's not A, it's not C or D because it's gotta have the ability to do both because it says it can do fermentation. Bacteria don't have, I don't think bacteria have mitochondria. All right, I'm gonna go final answer with the yeast. Finally done with that one, next. Researchers want to explore the experience of subjects as they engage in the Stroop task. What is that? A task in selective attention that measures the ability to distinguish between discordant stimuli. The researchers are not merely interested in response time, but want to know qualitative details about the subject's internal experiences. Which of the following should they implement? So I don't think it would be observational because then you wouldn't get much of the qualitative internal experiences. Phenomenological method? I don't even know what D is, but I guess if you want to get, I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have to guess on this one. I think it's either A or C, cause I don't know what this is and I don't think it's observational. We're gonna go survey. All right, oh my God. <laughs> compound, I know it's chemistry, I'm screwed. Compound J reacts with compound K at 20 degrees Celsius to form a mixture of two products, L and M. When the action is performed at 60, compounds L and M are formed and 80 and 20 respectively. Okay, so the temperature increase increases the likelihood of getting more L. When the reaction temperature obtained at 20 is heated to 60 and allowed to stand overnight, the composition slowly changes to 80 L, 20 M, and remains invariant at longer reaction times. I think the equilib I think it's A, because the equilibrium makes sense because it's getting to a certain point and not changing. It's invariant with longer reaction times. And when it was allowed to sit overnight, it still didn't change and it was slower. The equilibrium occurs, happens slower, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna go with A, I think that's right. I actually, that's the only one so far I think I'm actually confident with. And it's probably wrong. Which of the following best describes a scenario involving directional selection? Oh my gosh, none of this is even relevant. to. I, why do they test you on this garbage? Okay. Turtles living on an island become physically separated in two groups when a tropical storm revives the same. Eventually they are no longer able to mate. That doesn't really give either direction the ability. Breeding creates dogs that produce little to no dander and thus are hypoallergenic. Let's attract more. That's C is natural selection. Field mice that are able to escape into small spaces are less likely to be consumed by predators and thus larger mice are selected against over time. That is directional. 
I think, because it's going in one particular direction. It's getting rid of a particular population, and we are going into a direction of smaller mice. I'm gonna go D. I actually feel pretty decent about that one, too. Is that it? Oh, one more, okay. Bisphosphonates, oh, a medication, something I know about, okay. Bisphosphonates are a class of medication that function to inhibit bone resorption, yup. They are frequently used by physicians to prevent or reduce the bone loss occurring during osteoporosis. Which of the following is a potential mechanism of action? All right, let's go. Okay, uh, prevent or reduce the bone loss that occurs during osteoporosis. So increasing in the small intestine, trigger in osteoclasts. Yep, that's it. Bisphosphonate is something I can finally talk about. It prevents the um, activity of osteoclasts, which are the cells responsible for breaking down bone. So as it said in the question, if the goal is to stop osteoporosis, which is the thinning of bones in elderly people, you want to stop the cell that is in charge of breaking them down. Um, and that's to, that's the primary thing that they do. All right. So that's that. I did 10 questions. I feel terrible about this. I don't know why. And like half of this is relevant for med school because we didn't talk about hardly any of it. But let's see how I did. So all done. Let's submit. Okay. I'd be... I would be pretty happy, like when I first predicted how this was going to go when I did 10 questions, I would be pretty okay if I got four. Anything above four, I would feel pretty decent about considering how little we've learned in med school about this stuff or how little relevance it carries. <clears throat> anything above six, like anything four to six, I'd be like, all right, that's pretty solid. Anything above six, I'm, I don't know how that happened. Um, but let's, let's see. All right, submit. Oh, okay. Okay, five out of 10, um, five out of 10. So that's not bad. I mean, four to six was like decent for me. I obviously have not been studying this material for the MCAT, so I feel okay about that. I am interested in seeing which answers were correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my email and get myself those answers. All right, so I don't know why, but the Princeton Review did not wanna email me that for some reason. I tried doing a couple different emails and I wasn't getting the questions and answers. So I just like copied and pasted one into Google and I think I found a Quizlet with all of them. So let's take a look at that. So this is the first question, the object that was shot off of the ground at 30 degrees uh, for eight seconds, the maximum height. I was like, I, I did not think you could solve this without knowing the initial takeoff velocity. But according to this, the answer is B, which was 80. Since we are not given the initial total launch velocity, is it easier to look at the second half of the journey where the initial velocity is zero? Oh, so they weren't looking at it from going up, they were looking at it from going down and that would give you a zero velocity. I don't even understand this explanation. Y equals zero plus half, Y equals velocity plus half of, yeah, I'm gonna, physics, I got a two on the AP physics exam, okay? So we're gonna skip that one. I got it wrong. That was not one of the five I got right. So next, all of the following types of bonds are in double-stranded DNA. I think it's still disulfide. I think I was actually right on this one. And it is, disulfide bridges are formed as protein modification, not DNA. Okay, there's one. Next, according to the, okay, the elaboration likelihood model, I have no idea, but I think, oh, I, I thought I was right on this one. The length of the message was not persuasive enough. C, what? The truthfulness of the message itself is not actually a characteristic used to determine whether it will be persuasive. The length does. Okay, so that was, wow. I thought I got that one right. Okay, next. The phospholipids and fatty acids. I put C. I thought phospholipids had two tails. And I was right. Okay, okay. I got that. I got that. All right, next. Cooley's looking glass. Okay, I put labeling theory. I had no idea what this meant. If I got it right, it was just a guess. Symbolic interactionism. What the heck? I have no idea. Next. Clearly, I'm not prepared for med school because I didn't do well in this practice MCAT. Fermentation, that's the facultative anaerobe, that is the yeast. Yep, okay, that one we got. And the eukaryotic cells have mitochondria, which is yeast and not pro, uh, bacteria. Good. Researchers, okay, I said survey because you wanted to get their opinion. Oh, and that's wrong too. The phenomenological, what does that even mean? Okay, well, how many have I gotten right? It said I got five right. 
So I guess the next three, I got all of them right. Cause I think I've only gotten two or three right. Compound J, yes, the equilibrium. Okay, so I was right. So this one, the equilibrium made it because the longer it was, it didn't change anything. Okay, that one I got. And here's the directional selection. I think I got, the, I was pretty confident on this one because that gives you a specific direction that the, the selection is going towards the smaller mice. Yep, yep, yep. Got that one, okay. And then the last one, I, last one I had to have gotten right because please help me. This is the one thing that I actually learned about in med school was medication and bisphosphonates trigger apoptosis in osteoclasts. Okay, so not great. Five out of 10 is an F. I don't know what that would translate to, a 50% on the MCAT, but it's probably not good enough to get you into med school. You know what, I think in the process of filming this video, I have grown a much greater appreciation for the combined route that I took, and I'm very fortunate that I was able to be a part of that. Also, a lot of respect to all the pre-meds out there who are studying their butts off for this exam. I mean, it is not easy, and it's stuff that personally, I don't really care about. I can study all day for an exam on medications, on pathology, on different patient conditions, but like, I hate physics. Chemistry is not my thing. So props to you guys for really focusing on it and doing your best so that you can get into med school and learn about what you love. Again, make sure to give this video a like. If you did it along with me, drop your score down in the comments. I'm sure you guys did much better than I did. Um, so I wanna see how you guys are all doing. If you want me to do something else in the future or have any ideas for a future video, also drop that down. I'm always looking for new ideas. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed me embarrassing myself a little bit trying to answer these questions. Make sure to subscribe and as always, I'll see you next time.